Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 8, Non-Infectious Disease and Disorders. This is video number 14, and we're going to just have a bit of a look at a case study of a non-infectious disease. In this video, one of the things you need to be able to do is to present a case study. So specifically, you can investigate the treatment and management and possible future directions for further research of a non-infectious disease using an example from one of the non-infectious disease categories listed above. So that's specifically the um, aim of this and the categories listed above include genetic disease, nutritional diseases and diseases uh, associated with environmental exposure. So we need to be able to understand these terms treatment and management. We need to talk about how they may relate specifically to a named non-infectious disease from one of those categories that we previously looked at and also to see if you can um, propose different sorts of directions in which a particular um, disease research might take in order to uh, improve the outcomes for sufferers of that disease into the future. So that brings us to these key terms, prevention, treatment and management of disease. And of course, this is going to be um, very generic because the specifics of each of these terms is going to relate to the actual disease that we're discussing. But in general terms, prevention is, is to avoid developing it. So anything that we can do that seeks to avoid um, catching, if it's a pathogen, or um, exposing ourselves to particular agents or risk factors associated with certain types of diseases. That's what prevention strategies are about. And sometimes there are public health campaigns to help raise awareness about some of the risk factors and therefore some of the ways in which you can try and prevent the development of this disease in the first place. Now that could be as simple as having a well-balanced diet that ensures you get your range of vitamins and minerals, or it could be adopting sun-safe practices to reduce your exposure to ultraviolet radiation. Now notice prevention is something that we seek to do, it's not something that we're always successful at doing. So if we do contract a particular disease or disorder, then there are two main courses that they will go, uh, that, that we will go on as a result. The first of those is treatment. And the difference really between treatment and management, I guess, is twofold. Firstly, in terms of um, time frame. So treatments often uh, do represent shorter time frames and management longer time frames. Also, treatments sometimes imply um, some sort of um, temporary condition. Management sometimes implies a more permanent condition. So. Uh, simplest forms of treatment, for example, might be if we have a vitamin deficiency that we uh, prescribed or we can just walk into a, a shop, a health food shop, buy some vitamins or maybe purchase some foods that we know are rich in those vitamins and to take those in order to reverse the effects of whatever the deficiency was. Sometimes treatment can be as simple as that. Other times, of course, the treatment may be more complex and the treatment may also depend on the nature of the particular illness. So cancers, for example, do come in a range of different types of forms. Some of them are operable and sometimes there's a high success rate in uh, surgical removal of a tumour. Other times, particularly if that tumour is found to be malignant, um, surgery may be um, useless or it certainly may not be the only treatment that may uh, need to occur. And this tends to lead us towards management and management is about control. So the, the key about management is control. And why do we need control? Because control is an implication that we're going to have to be dealing with this disease for some time. Um, so often cancers do sneak from the treatment to the management and sometimes it can be difficult to exactly um, quantify each of these two different things or, or at least find the boundary between where one ends or one starts and one ends. Um, but the, uh, don't worry too much about the semantics of treatment and management. Think too about management being about control. So often there's a range of different treatments that are part of a management plan that involve um, short-term and long-term goals. Uh, and often are also associated with specific monitoring to ensure that conditions are not getting any worse. When we analyze future directions, that's where we're trying to put prevention and management together. Often we're trying to see whether or not the factors that we've identified as key risk factors are 
Are, are there ways that we can address those or raise awareness of those more effectively? And the management plans, have we um, come up with some what we figure are suitable medical treatments? Can we identify how well those treatments work, whether or not they can be supplemented, um, improved or replaced at some point in the future? So this is all about um, moving things forward. And, and arrows are quite a good way to kind of indicate this future direction. So why do we do descriptive studies? Well, descriptive studies are about getting us a lot of information that we can sift through and try and form hypotheses. Our analytical studies are studies that are based on those hypotheses. I think there might be a link between cigarette smoking and lung cancer. So I wanna carry out a more targeted study to actually see whether those two factors have some level of correlation. If I do that, then often that is going to lead me into prevention or management strategies and potentially um, intervention kind of epidemiological studies Having identified what I think are factors, then we're going to put some things in place and see whether or not they are actually having an effect on the incidence of particular disease. So our analytical studies can lead to some conclusions uh, based on our hypotheses, or they can open up other lines of research, other opportunities for us to, to learn more about a particular disease. So now that you've got these key terms um, under your belt, what you need to do then is to go into one disease in a little bit more detail. Now this can be a genetic disease, a nutritional disease, or a disease associated with environmental exposure. And I've talked a little bit about the relationship between cigarette smoking and lung cancer. So let's just quickly contextualize what we're doing uh, in this context and talk about some of the things that you might want to include. So obviously, if we're doing an epidemiological study, then graphing is going to be one of your key skills. So I am going to want to see um, some data or you're going to want me to provide some data that you can look at, analyze, identify trends, see if you can see some correlations or perhaps even some cause and effects that are going on here. One of the things that we do know is tobacco smoking is in Australia, the largest single cause of lung cancer. And it's responsible for about 90% of the cancers, lung cancers in males and 65% in females. This is such a high, strong link that it has caused a huge number of actual legislative changes to occur, um, not just in relation to where people can smoke, but because of the exposure to secondhand or passive smoke, that has also been seen to have uh, a causal effect on increased levels of lung cancer that has now limited um, to a very, very small number of the places where people can actually um, smoke cigarettes. But of course, cigarette smoke is not the only substance that can um, increase the risk of lung cancers. And there are several other industrial and environmental um, gases or factors, chemicals, that can also contribute to increased levels of lung cancer. So remember, what we're trying to do is we're looking at our prevention, our treatment, our management, and our research. So as you look at your case study, go firstly through prevention. How do we prevent lung cancer? Well, if we're smokers, it would be good to quit. If we're not smokers, it would be good not to take it up. We know there's such a strong correlation between these that it's a really smart thing not to start. We try and avoid exposure to passive cigarettes. We try and avoid inhaling certain chemicals in the workplace, radon, for example. Um, and also, healthy diets have been shown to have positive impact on reducing the incidences of lung cancer. What if we get it? Well, then we've got to treat it. So when we treat it, um, surgery I talked about before is one potential way we can remove the whole tumour uh, if we can remove the whole tumour, that might involve removing the entire lung, a pneumonectomy, just one lobe of the lung. There's two or three lobes in the lungs, depending on whether they're the right or the left lung, and that would be a lobectomy, or even a small part of one of those lobes, uh, such as in a wedge resection. Lung cancer being a type of cancer, we know chemotherapy, radiotherapy, targeted therapies, targeting those specific cells, or even immunotherapy that helps boost the immune response can all be treatments 
to try and help uh, a patient who has contracted lung cancer. Being cancer though, it's often uh, management is gonna be part of the process, even if surgery's been involved, some sort of monitoring um, through the uh, regular x-rays, CT scans, to keep an eye on what's actually going on, make sure that there's not a relapse or a recurrence of the um, cancerous cells. And this can be very important part of ongoing management of a particular condition. It could include therapies. Um, it could even in, involve some sort of um, invasive techniques to remove fluid from the lungs or to just more passively keep monitoring of the airways. So we can have uh, both active and passive components to our management plans uh, watch and wait and see what changes are get in and actually make sure that the circumstances or the conditions are as good as they can possibly be. There is a lung uh, foundation in Australia and they um, have on their website a little bit of the research areas that they're looking at um, taking into the future. In, in the general sense, early detection, um, successful screening methods and how, how we can screen, uh, targeted treatments, increasing survival rates and genetic markers can all be areas where we may look at um, how lung cancer can be addressed in the future. Things like CRISPR, um, gene technologies and gene therapies that may be able to be very specific may also have an impact um, in the uh, management, treatment and perhaps even prevention of lung cancers in the future. One of the things that the um, website does talk about is the fact that lung cancer currently has one of the lowest survival rates of any cancer in Australia. Just 15% of patients live five years past their diagnosis. And so where we probably are maybe more aware of some of the campaigns associated with breast cancer, prostate cancer or ovarian cancers, obviously there's a lot of areas in medicine where there's a lot of competition for the funding dollars and um, lung cancer is just another one of these areas where there's really a need for continuing research into this area. You might like to consolidate these notes on lung cancer, uh, or you might like to pick another area uh, of those three that we've looked at in order to do your case study. But that's something you'll get a bit of time to work on in class and perhaps uh, at home too. Thanks for watching.